hello guys welcome to my channel today I am going to show you about how to do maximum likelihood supervised classification using ArcGIS so let's start using a Lancet image so I have my ArcGIS 10.4.1 already open for you guys because it usually takes a long time and now what I'm going to do is I have a Lancet image. So when you just open this, you get all the bands that is from B1 to B11, I guess. Yes, because it's a Lancet, I think it's 8. Yes, it is a Lancet 8. Yes, it is LC08. So when I'm going to do any kind of classification, what I usually consider is the mtl.txt file because this file has all the bands in it so this one is a pretty big file let's see what's the property of this file is so let's go to the property and let's go to the key metadata and yes we can see that all the bands are together so this is all the band that coastal aerosol blue green red infrared short and wave infrared and all of them so yes it's a lancet 8 image and yep it has eight bands 16 bit pixel yep and it's in zone 44 so let's start with the processing so we as we all know that for classification you need to right click on the space and select image classification and for this to come you need to have an extension of spatial analyst so you need this spatial analyst checked so that you can have your image classification bar and here is the image classification bar it looks like this so yes i've selected my image it's a raster file we have the three bands in front of us if you want to change the bands we can do that so let's bring this to so let's make this near infrared this has red and this is green let's see how it looks yep so now we know that the red here represents all the healthy vegetation and it's a false color image so we can easily get to know what we are looking for. So in this classification, I want to classify into major four land covers that is water, agriculture, forest and urban if we get urban. I think so. Yeah, we may get because it's a city image so we might get, we may get urban and let's start. So what is a supervised classification of it? So we know in supervised classification what the system does. So there, it's an algorithm running behind where we, uh, as a user, give training samples to the system and the algorithm evaluates itself on the basis of this. So we are going to do build some training samples. And for that, you need to go here on the toolbar and click on the training sample manager. So these samples will help the algorithm to understand what we are looking for. And okay, so first we'll go with the forest. So let's take a shape. So this is the shape. We can get a polygon or we can draw a rectangle or circle. I usually prefer a rectangle because I like it. Yes. So let's zoom in. So we know this pretty dark red shows that it's deep forest and some pinkish red will show us it's agriculture sometimes it's really hard to draw a line between agriculture and forest but yeah in that case what i usually do is i take help from google earth to see what the image is now so this image is of year 2014 so yes i can like look at the google earth pro or google earth and check whether Yes, I'm doing a forest run in agriculture. So now I'm focusing more on forest and I can just like take samples. You can take big samples, you can take small samples, you can take as many samples as you want. The more sample you take, the more accurate it is. So in my graduate thesis, I literally took 40 to 45 samples of each land cover or sometimes maybe like 70s. So the more sample, the more accurate. So just try to focus on that whenever you take samples you just draw these boxes and this will reflect in your training manager and it should be evenly distributed throughout the image so that it's not concentrated on any particular area and yeah try to take 
areas which sometimes look really ambiguous so that the algorithm doesn't get confused while differentiating between an agriculture or a forest. So take as much samples as you can, combine them together and show them that these are forest. So these images are taken in the month of from October to Jan. So they are usually the months which does, is not expected to have clouds, but you never know. Clouds can be there any time. So yeah, I think this image is pretty good, but some somewhere it has clouds. So yeah, that's pretty okay. We can go with it. So yeah, let's take some more samples. You can really, really, really zoom inside and take like a pixel or it can go down. It depends on how accurate you want. But I want to show you the technique. So here it goes. So I've taken 12 samples and what I'll do is I'll select all of them together and click on merge training samples. So they all combine to one. I'll give it a color because it's a forest. Let's do it green. And I'll write forest, F-O-R-E-S-T, forest. Okay, so the next tra training sample, what I'm looking is water. So in this image, you can clear, it's pretty much clear where the water is because it's all blue. So you can take good, quite a good sample. It won't be that confusing. But sometimes what happens, the water in a particular area get really dried up or it's a shallow water or maybe because of growth of many microorganisms the water colors become green and then it's really hard for the system to again determine and the technique i'm using for determination is just my visual interpretation so as we know that the remote sensing has seven seven interpretation technique looking at the shape the texture the color the tone the pattern so it's just using the simple visual interpretation human eye just with the human eye perception but as these images are very clear and very prominent we can we can be like sure there there would be human error of course but it's more towards accuracy. So, because there are some times you literally can't go to the place and really get the accuracy done. So, yeah, here you go. I've taken almost quite a lot. So, like, combine them together and name this as water. And make it as blue. Yeah. Now the next one I'm looking for is urban. Sometimes it's really difficult to find urban because these Lancet images have 30 meter of resolution, so they cover a pretty big area. And let me check if I can see some habitation. It doesn't look like one. It might have small habitations. If you're really com confused where the habitations are here, see, this is how a habitation look like or a human settlement look like. So what you can do is, again, my suggestion would be to just go to Google Earth, just click on Google Earth or Google Earth Pro and see where the cities are. And then you can find the cities you can looking for cities or settlements or whatever you're looking for so here we found out a few let's just zoom in because first since these are high see again i can find few here so you really need to have like a bird's eye because it's sometimes really hard to find but try to not to take the samples which have read because there might be small national parks, gardens or something, and that can confuse the algorithm. And they might consider this as, instead of an urban settlement, they might consider this one as, um, what did I say? 
into a forest or agriculture so yeah, i can find few it's not that hard but yes i can do that let's just zoom out and look for a different area so try to get all your samples evenly throughout the image because what happens is if the images are not evenly distributed then the algorithm of course get confused so but yeah sometimes how it might happen that the urban cities are not evenly distributed so yeah i'm showing this whole process for you to understand because i i i would have made all these before and just opened the file but i really wanted you people to see how to search or how it looks because when i was a student i i really find it hard like how to identify which is what and what is what is the land cover so yes i wanted to help and rest is agriculture so these are really dried patches because it might be winter in this area because it's in northern hemisphere and it is during the month from october to january which is usually winters in northern hemisphere so agriculture finding agriculture is really hard but still we can find see these are small small farms i'll take a big patch of it see this is this looks like a mountainous barren area but it still has some growth forest I don't think this area has much of agriculture see it has agriculture somewhere here I suppose but nope it looks like barren no this is agriculture this is agriculture right this is again agriculture so you can get a lot of agricultural samples from here see these are agricultural lands it's really time-consuming sometimes but yes this what interests me i love to look at these images and work yeah you can see agricultural land here see sometimes it's in the foothills of the these small hills Okay, I think so this much is pretty much okay. I hope my system doesn't break out or it should work because sometimes the images are so big. Oh, I didn't color the urban. So let's make it brown and agriculture be um, yellowish green, olive, olive green or something yes the olive yellow sorry yeah okay and then we need to save this this will be a shape file so let's name this as supervised soup 14 dot shape file save this so you can so we need to make a shape file so that we can edit it and now the main thing the difference between uh, maximum likelihood classification and interactive classification supervised classification is we need to have signature files so for building the signature file what we need to do is we need to click on this so this is create signature file so let's make this soup 14 and sorry soup and usually the signature file would have an extension of .gsg and let's click on save and we need to wait okay so I think so my supervised signature file is ready so what we can do is click on the classification Click on the maximum likelihood. Oh, why this is coming up? Okay, maximum likelihood classification. Let's see. Yes, so 
When you click on this, it would show maximum likelihood classification. It performs a maximum likelihood classification on a set of raster bands and create a classified raster as an output. So, okay, you want to allow, yes, okay. So here is the band which we are working on. So yeah, it's the band. And here we need to input the signature file. So yes, soup 14 she is. She is my signature file open. Then I want the output in 2000. Nope, not in 30. I want to go in 14. It's a 14. And let's do an output file. Good. Master file as. Um, Supervised. Let's name it supervised. Okay. And so reject fraction will remain zero. And uh, there is nothing we need to change here. And yep, we are good to go. So let's click on OK and wait for the results. just click on the results and see how long it takes for the system to work it does it does a hell lot of work so let's wait so here we got the result it shows that the maximum likelihood is successful and let's go to the table of content because all the colors look different so one the value one here is for forest so it has changed the color so let's go and change it again if we click on the box right here you'll get the color so let's make it green for forest and 13 is for water but it looks more purple so make it blue light blue and then 23rd is for urban so urban is never red let's make it an orange and 31st is the agriculture so like, let's make it olive and here we go so how it looks so this is how you do the classification but you might be confused with the numbers so what you can do is right click on this go to the properties and instead of writing the values or count you can just label them like make it so you are in the properties in the symbology tab in uni unique values click on the label and write forest then water urban agriculture apply so this is how you do it but you can find this green part on the side of this so this is the black background when you get in the Lancet images. So what you can, I have a video showing how to remove this. And if you're still not able to remove this, then let me know. I would help you with that. And thank you for watching my video. If you have any questions, just let me know. Please share, subscribe and like the video. Thank you.